Hey, we will start. Ooh, I'll read to you. This video depicts all 13 billion years of time unfolding on a 10 minute scale from the Big Bang to today. Every passing second represents 22 million years. On this scale, humans do not appear into the last fraction of a second. Okay. From the primordial cloud of gas and cosmic dust, gravity forged the stars. Gravity connects star systems together in vast galaxies and steers them on their journey through unbounded space. I know this voice. This guy was just on the Big Think YouTube channel talking about the Fermi paradox. He's a physicist. I can't think of his name now that I've stopped the video. Anyway, I'll find that video that I'm talking about from Big Think and I'll link it for you. The relentless flow of time has driven the evolution of the universe and created extraordinary wonders. Some galaxies form so close together that they're locked in a gravitational embrace. I mean, one day Milky Way and Andromeda. A magnificent sight it would be. Brian Cox, is what he's called. As it evolves, the universe passes through distinct eras. Vast ages whose beginnings and endings are marked by unique milestones. The births and deaths of its wonders. We are the product of a grand evolutionary sequence, cosmic evolution about which we are only occasionally aware. Have you guys seen the pale blue dot video by Carl Sagan? That's a good one if you haven't. Similar subject. Gravity is the great creator, the constructor of worlds. But gravity is also the destroyer because it's relentless. When a star around 15 times the mass of our sun collapses, all the matter in its core is crushed into an infinite void of blackness known as a stellar mass black hole. That is terrifying to me. What a visual. The immense gravitational pull of these monsters can rip a star apart. They tear matter from its surface and drag it into orbit. It looks like an eye with a dark pupil. This superheated matter spins around the mouth of the black hole 
and great jets of radiation fire from the core. Although these jets can be seen across the cosmos, the core itself remains a mystery. Not even light can escape, so their interior is forever hidden from us. Throughout a star's life, there is a constant battle between energy pushing out and gravity pushing in. When it runs out of fuel, the star collapses and then explodes with the brightness of a billion suns. The production level of this video so far is amazing. Also, it's really well written. the star is torn apart, it will fire out into space all the elements that it created in its life and death. These are new stars forming from the elements blown out by supernova explosions. New stars being born from the remains of dead ones. And it's from this universal process of death and rebirth that we emerged. Because it was in a nebula just like this, five billion years ago, that our sun was formed. Clouds of hydrogen collapse further and further under the force of gravity and the life cycle of a new star has begun. A star was born that would come to be known as the Sun. Around it, a network of planets formed. Among them was the Earth. Here we go. Debris left over from the formation of the solar system collides with the Earth. Music shift and everything. Earth began life as a molten hell. The early continents were still forming. The land was dominated by volcanoes. David Attenborough. I would know that voice anywhere. I watch his videos to go to bed. Hostile and lifeless. But deep in the oceans, life had begun. The latest theory is that chemicals spewing from underwater volcanic vents solidified and created the conditions needed for the first cells to form. It's amazing to think that complex organisms come from that. For some three billion years, Simple microscopic organisms were the most advanced form of life on the planet. Cyanobacteria and other oxygen producing microbes began to bloom. These flourished in colonies of plant like microbes that pumped out enormous volumes of oxygen. And it was this increase in oxygen that was the key to the rise of the animal kingdom.
organisms started using oxygen to respire, yielding a lot more energy, which allowed the development of more complex life. Just Amazing. before the complex life appeared, the world was in the grip of the biggest ice age in its entire history. And then suddenly, advanced organisms appeared. Amazing. Humans not appearing until that last fraction of a second made me think of the George Carlin bit called Saving the Planet. If you haven't seen that, I will link it for you. But in that, he talks about how this planet has been here way longer than we have and will probably be here way after us. How long will it be here? I don't know. It kind of depends. But anyway, this is from a channel called Melody Sheep. I'm going to make sure to link the video and the channel in the description for you in case that they have any other videos that you're interested in. And if they do and you want to recommend it for us to watch in the future, just let me know the title. Other than that, it's kind of mind blowing. Also, it gives a weird perspective to me to think about how much we know of the universe is just speculation and hypotheses and theory and how much we still don't know and might never know during our lifetimes. But back to that George Carlin saving the planet bit and then the planet being here long after us. Sometimes when I can't sleep at night and I'm not thinking about the embarrassing things I've done. So the other half of the time I consider how if an asteroid killed the previous life forms on Earth then who's to say that there's not going to be, or that there couldn't be another unforeseen black swan event that starts the whole thing over again. And then I wonder how much of this, us, the universe existence is cyclical. I don't know, I probably will never know, but then existential thoughts start coming in. So I'll just leave it there because that quickly gets dark. But whenever I feel that I'm focused too much on something specific in my life, watching these types of videos always gives me a, the perspective that it's not that serious, which I do like. So for a literary recommendation, we talked about Brian Cox being the narrator. And in a video we watched, I think it was the Fermi Paradox. It could have been about simulation theory. I was recommended a video or excuse me, a book from a subscriber called The Planets by Brian Cox. And it was easy enough to read. If you like Carl Sagan's books, I would say that it's very similarly written and digestible. I'm going to link that book for you. I have to be completely honest, though. I got about three fourths of the way through that book and I lost it in an airport and I never finished. And I probably won't finish because I feel a little bit stubborn about buying the whole book again just for the last fourth of it. So if you want to give me spoilers, go ahead and do that. But if you have another book that you want to recommend on any topic of the universe, that's kind of broad, feel free to do that in the comments. Other than that, just thank you for watching with me and I'll catch you in the next.